Hey skiers, it's Bob from SkiEssentials.com and in the past we have been getting some nice comments and questions on our blog, Chairlift Chat, and on our YouTube channel about what we ski every day. Um, and kind of one of the nice things about working here is that we get to try out a lot of these different skis, report to you, help make your purchasing decision a little bit easier. Uh, Jeff and I have been kind of joking a little bit this year that we've been skiing so many other skis that we hardly ever get to ski on our own stuff. So um, based on your comments and feedback, which we love, uh, we're going to start a new series called What's in Your Quiver with SkiEssentials.com. And this is the first one here, so we'll see how it goes. Um, you know, a lot of these skis here are acquired in different ways and I might not have bought something like this if I walked into a shop with, you know, my budget and application, but through a bunch of different means and we'll kind of touch on those, uh, we ended up with these. Uh, we'll start with kind of most used to least used here is how I've got these organized. Um, and we'll start with a Nordica Soul Rider 87. Uh, this is the 2019 version. And this is my utility ski. Um, on paper, I am not really a soul rider skier. I don't spend time in the park. Um, six foot two, 220 pounds. The ski has no metal in it. Um, I use it in a directional format. And it's uh, one of my favorites and most used. So this is the 185. Um, and, you know, that nice matching look pivot 18 binding on it as well. Um, but I use this a lot for skiing with my family, with my kids, and, you know, here in Stowe we have a lot of really tight trees and, and uh, you know, narrow bump trails. And this ski works about as well as you can, as you can possibly get. Um, first tried this out in the 2018 ski test and was just really impressed with the energy that you get out of the ski. I mean, it's very flexible. You know, I have no trouble bending this whatsoever but it's just incredibly fun. So even if you're not, you know, using it in a park application, um, you know, Jeff has a pair of these as well, and he's pretty much only using them park. Um, but, you know, for even a skier like me using them in, in an all mountain format, um, really, really helpful. And I've always really liked having the twin tip here at Stowe, uh, allows you to K turn out of tricky spots in the, in the uh, trees that we got, you know, it's pretty easy to get caught up in some tight spots. So, you know, I love these things in the trees and the bumps here at Stowe. Just a really nice utility ski. Um, and I bought those after the ski test, you know, with my own money. And we'll kind of touch basically on how we go about getting these skis, but not too much. Um, next up is a Nordica Enforcer 88. This is the 2020 version. Um, I won these in a auction at a bowling contest. So we have a fundraiser. And my wife is extremely lucky, so she, you know, bought a bunch of uh, bunch of tickets for the raffle and won my, uh, you know, my choice of Nordica skis. And this is what I chose. So this is the Enforcer 88 uh, and the 186. Um, and then an interesting story about the bindings. I happened to win my fantasy football league, uh, you know, a few days later. So I had some extra cash on hand and just went on our website at SkiEssentials.com and bought these nice marker jester 18 pro bindings definitely overkill but the orange looks really sharp so i really like them a lot um you know for here at stowe again with that you know upper 80s range of ski uh this is you know if i'm going out in the morning by myself on a weekend and want to go fast uh, this is what i'll take really amazing groomer ski uh you know edge to edge really quick uh, very very stiff in the tail so if I go from skiing a Soul Rider to the Enforcer back to back, uh, there's, you know, I definitely feel like you got to work a little harder to get this tail to, tail to do what I want, especially in the tighter woods. But, um, you know, on the groomers and we, you know, we get, you know, a lot of small snowstorms here. So, you know, even, even with an inch or two on the ground, um, these are really nice. More of a free ride tapered shape to it and rocker. So it's, you know, a little bit more uh, versatile in the softer snow, but I just love everything about these skis. Um, just really sharp and fun to use. Um, and then in one of our internal, uh, you know, our company's internal sales contests, I won these Nordica Enforcer 100. So this is a 2021 version. Um, they were out of the Pivot 18, so I had to settle for a Pivot 14. 
but I think the black looks really sharp on this. Um, and these are just, I've been skiing some iteration of, I think this is my third Enforcer 100 since they re-came out in 2016. Um, and this one coming in the 191 is definitely my favorite. Uh, you know, lighter in the tips, but still just incredibly sturdy underfoot. This thing is just a total Cadillac. Um, and not just on the groomers, you know, softer snow, but I mean, I skied this last year on our deepest day. We probably had, you know, two, two and a half feet of fresh snow and I skied this thing and there was uh, no problem whatsoever holding up, you know, definitely that longer rocker uh, profile really helps. Um, but yeah, just, you know, a classic ski that Enforcer 100 and I'm really happy to be on this thing. So, you know, between these three, um, you know, I just, I end up using this one the most. This thing probably has, you know, close to 200, 250 days on it. Um, and uh, amazingly, this 100, I've taken one run on this this year. So that's something I would like to remedy, but we've just been so busy putting out content that haven't really gotten a chance to get on these, uh, you know, for a specific day. So hopefully from, you know, mid-February on out, I'll get some more days on this Enforcer 100. Uh, moving on into more of a backcountry setup here, I have a Liberty Origin 96. Um, this was mounted Alpine last year, and I got a um, Marker Alpinist 12 binding to put on it for uh, backcountry skiing. Really nice with the bamboo and poplar wood core, um, and it definitely is a lighter ski, so it works well for this backcountry application. It's not super light, um, and you know, when you pair it with the lighter binding, it makes for a pretty light setup. I haven't put it on a scale or anything, but um, you know, at 96 underfoot, that's kind of all you need around here for backcountry stuff. Um, you know, it's not, it's not always super deep, so it's just nice to have that mid 90s uh, shape for this. And then just with the rocker profile um, and that nice smooth taper shape, I mean, these tails are just really nice. I like these for alpine skis, but there was a little bit too much overlap for me. Um, with the Soul Rider and the Enforcer 100. So that's why I moved it to the, to the backcountry binding and glad I did. Uh, another sales contest winner, this was from 2009, this is 2018 K2 Pinnacle 105. Um, and you might think that there might be some overlap between this and the Enforcer 100, um, but the rocker profile of this and just this wide, wide shovel make this uh, superior floater um, to the Enforcer 100. One of the really interesting things about this compared to the Enforcer is that these are both 191s and when you put them right next to each other that K2 just looks you know a couple centimeters longer so they do you know they do float better when you get this thing you know 10 12 15 inches it is a very very nice floater you know there just doesn't seem to be too many days around here that you need that super wide ski for super long. Um, but as you can see, this rocker profile is pretty dramatic. Um, so it does float better than that Enforcer 100, even though it's only five millimeters wider underfoot. So uh, last but not least, I got a 1998 Solomon Superforce 9 2S. Uh, this is a Power 8 which translates to a 203. Um, this is probably one of the funnest skis I have um, for a couple reasons. Um, you know, I have, a, I have a pretty strong mogul background and I really enjoy taking that nice straight line into, you know, tighter moguls. Right um, I actually traded these for a Thule Vox when I lived in Breckenridge at the turn of the millennium. So this is, you know, 1998, I got it, you know, in 2000. The hard part was finding bindings for this because a lot of people when they were cycling through skis would you know move the bindings and then put the skis in the shed so these skis were in my shed for about 15 years uh, unmounted and had to locate a binding these you know um, a modern binding like uh, this marker here the nice thing about them is that they have a wide platform but if you put that on this 62 millimeter wasted ski uh, it's going to hang off pretty far. So I was able to track down this nice pair of Solomon. Um, you know, it's a, like an STH model um, and then had to, in fact, find brakes and trim them down a little bit to, to, uh, to fit in the holes here. 
But amazingly, this Solomon binding had the same hole pattern as the previous Solomon binding that came off of it. So 20 years later, um, still the same hole pattern for these, for these bindings. Um, and that's kind of a testament to, you know, how consistent they've been um, making, uh, making these bindings. So really fun on, you know, actually like the harder the snow, the better. The biggest limitation on this ski actually is fresh corduroy when this tip gets hung up in like the rivulet a little bit. So it's better like second, third run where, when it's uh, just a little bit scraped flat. Um, but the harder the snow, the better for a ski like this. And it's just amazing how you have to remember to ski more two-footed um, and, you know, use your poles more to make more turns. So the faster you pull plant, the faster you turn. Um, you know, every time I get on these, my instinct is to just kind of tip and roll and then you almost fall over. So you have to, there's just like a little bit of a relearning curve when you get on something like this. But, um, you know, two years ago, I skied this probably 30 days um, throughout the year and just had a blast on it. So it's nice to always kind of get back to those, uh, to those older skis. So, um, well, that's it. That is my personal quiver. Um, you know, lots of good stuff on the wall here and hopefully some interesting stories about how we came across it. Um, you know, we'll hopefully continue this series down the future. People are always interested in what, you know, what we're skiing on every day, but you know, it's just, it's not always an everyday thing for us. Um, you know, but again, this is, this is my most used ski, this Soul Rider 87. Um, and I just love it for, you know, all applications and, um, you know, especially around here. So just kind of making sure that what you're skiing lines up with, um, you know, what you're actually doing, not what you want to do. So, you know, for me and most of my days on the mountain, you know, those narrower skis are, are, you know, better for me. So, um, but that's it. Uh, nice to, nice to get our personal stuff in here and see what type of feedback we get. And we'll see you out there on the hill. Bye.